The Age of Enlightenment was a European affair. The 17th century brought decisive steps towards modern science, which accelerated during the 18th century. A critical innovation was the creation of permanent scientific societies in the major and their scholarly journals, which dramatically speeded the diffusion of new ideas. Typical was the founding of the Royal Society in London in 1660, directly based on the works of Newton, Descartes, Pascal, and Leibniz, the way was now clear to the development of modern mathematics, physics, and technology by the generation of Benjamin Franklin, 1706-1790, Leonard Euler, 1707-1783, Mikhail Lomonosov, 1711-1765, and Jean Le Rond d'Alembert, 1717-1783. Denis Diderot's Encyclopédie, published between 1750 and 1772 brought this new understanding to a wider audience. The impact of this process was not limited to science and technology, but affected philosophy, Immanuel Kant, David Hume, religion, the increasingly significant impact of science upon religion, and society, and politics in general, Adam Smith, Voltaire. The early modern period is seen as a flowering of the European Renaissance, in what is often known as the scientific revolution, viewed as a foundation of modern science. Romanticism in Science The Romantic movement of the early 19th century reshaped science by opening up new pursuits unexpected in the classical approaches of the Enlightenment. Breakthroughs came in biology, especially in Darwin's theory of evolution, as well as physics, electromagnetism, mathematics, non-Euclidean geometry, group theory, and chemistry, organic chemistry. The decline of Romanticism occurred because a new movement, positivism, began to take hold of the ideals of the intellectuals after 1840 and lasted until about 1880. Euro Eurocentrism in Scientific History Eurocentrism in Scientific History is historical accounts written about the development of modern science that attributes all scholarly, technological, and philosophical gains to Europe and marginalizes outside contributions. The scientific revolution in Europe during the 16th to 18th centuries was the period of human advancement into modern science by disproving the Aristotelian view of natural sciences and philosophy through proofs of calculations. Until Joseph Needham's book series Science and Civilization in China began in 1954, many historians would write about modern science solely as a European achievement with no significant contributions from civilizations other than the Greeks. Recent historical writings have argued that there were significant influences and contributions from Egyptian, Mesopotamian, Arabic, Indian, and Chinese astronomy and mathematics. In contrast to the Eurocentric view, historians argue evidence of East Asian influence in the scientific revolution. The astronomer and mathematician Nicolaus Copernicus is credited with having begun the scientific revolution with his work De Revolutionibus Orbium Coelestium, which used calculations of Islamic astronomers. His findings were focused on the Earth's rotation on its axis every 24 hours and its orbit around the Sun every 365 and a quarter days. These findings led Copernicus to his heliocentric system, using knowledge known to Chinese astronomers based on their understanding of heavenly bodies moving against the path of the Sun and the pole star, such as comets. His heliocentric planetary theory was published in 1543, the same year the Greek works of Archimedes were translated from Arabic into Latin. The change in philosophical mindset, as well as astronomical improvements gained by the Jesuits' research in China, is used as evidence to argue for its influence in Copernican work as well as Arab calculations and translations of Greek texts. Modern Science with the scientific revolution, paradigms established in the time of classical antiquity were replaced with those of scientists like Nicolaus Copernicus, Galileo Galilei, 
Christian Huygens, and Isaac Newton. During the 19th century, the practice of science became professionalized and institutionalized in ways that continued through the 20th century. As the role of scientific knowledge grew in society, it became incorporated with many aspects of the functioning of nation-states. Natural Sciences Physics The scientific revolution is a convenient boundary between ancient thought and classical physics. Nicolaus Copernicus revived the heliocentric model of the solar system described by Aristarchus of Samos. This was followed by the first known model of planetary motion given by Johannes Kepler in the early 17th century, which proposed that the planets follow elliptical orbits, with the Sun at one focus of the ellipse. Galileo, father of modern physics, also made use of experiments to validate physical theories, a key element of the scientific method. Christian Huygens derived the centripetal, and centrifugal forces, and was the first to transfer mathematical inquiry to describe unobservable physical phenomena. William Gilbert did some of the earliest experiments with electricity and magnetism, establishing that the Earth itself is magnetic. In 1687, Isaac Newton published the Principia Mathematica, detailing two comprehensive and successful physical theories, Newton's laws of motion, which led to classical mechanics and Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation, which describes the fundamental force of gravity. During the late 18th and early 19th centuries, the behavior of electricity and magnetism was studied by Luigi Galvani, Giovanni Aldini, Alessandro Volta, Michael Faraday, George Ohm, and others. These studies led to the unification of the two phenomena into a single theory of electromagnetism by James Clerk Maxwell, known as Maxwell's equation. Equations. The beginning of the 20th century brought the start of a revolution in physics. The long-held theories of Newton were shown not to be correct in all circumstances. Beginning in 1900, Max Planck, Albert Einstein, Niels Bohr, and others developed quantum theories to explain various anomalous experimental results by introducing discrete energy levels. Not only did quantum mechanics show that the laws of motion did not hold on small scales, but the theory of general relativity, proposed by Einstein in 1915, showed that the fixed background of space-time on which both Newtonian mechanics and special relativity depended, could not exist. In 1925, Werner Heisenberg and Erwin Schrödinger formulated quantum mechanics, which explained the preceding quantum theories. The observation by Edwin Hubble in 1929, that the speed at which galaxies recede positively correlates with their distance, led to the understanding that the universe is expanding, and the formulation of the Big Bang Theory by George Lemaitre. In 1938 Otto Hahn and Fritz Strassmann discovered nuclear fission with radiochemical methods, and in 1939 Lise Meitner and Otto Robert Frisch wrote the first theoretical interpretation of the fission process, which was later improved by Niels Bohr and John A. Wheeler. Further developments took place during World War II, which led to the practical application of radar and the development and use of the atomic bomb. Around this time, Qian Xiang Wu was recruited by the Manhattan Project to help develop a process for separating uranium metal into U-235 and U-238 isotopes by gaseous diffusion. She was an expert experimentalist in beta decay and weak interaction physics. Wu designed an experiment that enabled theoretical physicists Sim Dao Li and Xin Ning Yang to disprove the law of parity experimentally, winning them a Nobel Prize in 1957. Though the, the process had begun with the invention of the cyclotron by Ernest O. Lawrence in the 1930s, physics in the post-war period entered into a phase of what historians have called big science, requiring massive machines, budgets, and laboratories to test their theories and move into new frontiers. The primary patron of physics became state governments, who recognized that the support of basic research could often lead to technologies useful to both military and industrial applications. Currently, general relativity and quantum mechanics are inconsistent with each other, and efforts are underway to unify the two. Chemistry 
modern chemistry emerged from the 16th through the 18th centuries through the material practices and theories promoted by alchemy, medicine, manufacturing, and mining. A decisive moment came when chemistry was distinguished from alchemy by Robert Boyle in his work The Skeptical Chemist in 1661, although the alchemical tradition continued for some time after his work. Other important steps included the gravimetric experimental practices of medicinal chemists like William Cullen, Joseph Black, Torburn Bergman, and Pierre Macker, and through the work of Antoine Lavoisier, father of modern chemistry, on oxygen, and a law of conservation of mass, which refuted phlogiston theory. The theory that all matter is made of atoms, which are the smallest constituents of matter that cannot be broken down without losing the basic chemical and physical properties of that matter, was provided by John Dalton in 1803, although the question took a hundred years to settle as proven. Dalton also formulated the law of mass relationships. In 1869, Dmitry Mendeleev composed his periodic table of elements based on Dalton's discoveries. The synthesis of urea by Friedrich Wohler opened a new research field, organic chemistry, and by the end of the 19th century, scientists were able to synthesize hundreds of organic compounds. The later part of the 19th century saw the exploitation of the Earth's petrochemicals, after the exhaustion of the oil supply from whaling. By the 20th century, systematic production of refined materials provided a ready supply of products that provided not only energy, but also synthetic materials for clothing, medicine, and everyday disposable resources. Application of the techniques of organic chemistry to living organisms resulted in physiological chemistry, the precursor to biochemistry. The 20th century also saw the integration of physics and chemistry, with chemical properties explained as the result of the electronic structure of the atom. Linus Pauling's book on the nature of the chemical bond used the principles of quantum mechanics to deduce bond angles in ever more complicated molecules. Pauling's work culminated in the physical modeling of DNA, the secret of life, in the words of Francis Crick. 1953. In the same year, the miller Urey experiment demonstrated in a simulation of primordial processes that basic constituents of proteins, simple amino acids, could themselves be built up from simpler molecules. Earth science. Geology existed as a cloud of isolated, disconnected ideas about rocks, minerals, and landforms long before it became a coherent science. Theophrastus' work on rocks, perilithin, remained authoritative for millennia. Its interpretation of fossils was not overturned until after the scientific revolution. Chinese polymath Xin Kuo, 1031-1095, first formulated hypotheses for the process of land formation. Based on his observation of fossils in a geological stratum in a mountain hundreds of miles from the ocean, he deduced that the land was formed by the erosion of the mountains and by deposition deposition of silt. Geology did not undergo systematic restructuring during the scientific revolution, but individual theorists made important contributions. Robert Hooke, for example, formulated a theory of earthquakes, and Nicholas Steno developed the theory of superposition and argued that fossils were the remains of once living creatures. Beginning with Thomas Burnett's sacred theory of the earth in 1681, natural philosophers began to explore the idea that the Earth had changed over time. Burnett and his contemporaries interpreted Earth's past in terms of events described in the Bible, but their work laid the intellectual foundations for secular interpretations of Earth history. Mod modern geology, like modern chemistry, gradually evolved during the 18th and early 19th centuries. Benoit de Maillet and the Comte de Buffon saw the earth as much older than the 6,000 years envisioned by biblical scholars. Jean-Étienne Gettard and Nicolas de Marist hiked central France and recorded their observations on some of the first geological maps. Aided by chemical experimentation, naturalists such as Scotland's John Walker, Sweden's Torburn Bergman, and Germany's Abraham Werner created comprehensive 
comprehensive classification systems for rocks and minerals, a collective achievement that transformed geology into a cutting-edge field by the end of the 18th century. These early geologists also proposed generalized interpretations of Earth history that led James Hutton, George Cuvier, and Alexander Bromyard, following in the steps of Steno, to argue that layers of rock could be dated by the fossils they contained, a principle first applied to the geology of the Paris Basin. The use of index fossils became a powerful tool for making geological maps, because it allowed geologists to correlate the rocks in one locality with those of similar age in other, distant localities. Over the first half of the 19th century, geologists such as Charles Lyell, Adam Sedgwick, and Roderick Murchison applied the new technique to rocks throughout Europe and eastern North America, setting the stage for more detailed, government-funded mapping projects in later decades. Mid midway through the 19th century, the focus of geology shifted from description and classification to attempts to understand how the surface of the earth had changed. The first comprehensive theories of mountain building were proposed during this period, as were the first modern theories of earthquakes and volcanoes. Louis Agassiz and others established the reality of continent-covering ice ages, and fluvialists like Andrew Crombie Ramsey argued that river valleys were formed over millions of years by the rivers that flow through them. After the discovery of radioactivity, radiometric dating methods were developed, starting in the 20th century. Alfred Wegener's theory of continental drift was widely dismissed when he proposed it in the 1910s, but new data gathered in the 1950s and 1960s led to the theory of plate tectonics, which provided a plausible mechanism for it. Plate tectonics also provided a unified explanation for a wide range of seemingly unrelated geological phenomena. Since 1970 it has served as the unifying principle in geology. Geologists' embrace of plate tectonics became part of a broadening of the field from a study of rocks into a study of the Earth as a planet. Other elements of this transformation include geophysical studies of the interior of the Earth, the grouping of geology with meteorology and oceanography as one of the Earth sciences, and comparisons of Earth and the solar system's other rocky planets. Environmental science is an interdisciplinary field. It draws upon the disciplines of biology, chemistry, earth sciences, ecology, geography, mathematics, and physics. Astronomy. Aristarchus of Samos published work on how to determine the sizes and distances of the sun and the moon, and Eratosthenes used this work to figure the size of the earth. Hipparchus later discovered, discovered the precession of the earth. Advances in astronomy and optical systems in the 19th century resulted in the first observation of an asteroid, one series, in 1801, and the discovery of Neptune in 1846. In 1925, Cecilia Pengapochkin determined that stars were composed mostly of hydrogen and helium. She was dissuaded by astronomer Henry Norris Russell from publishing this finding in her PhD thesis because of the widely held belief that stars had the same composition as the Earth. However, for years later, in 1929, Henry Norris Russell came to the same conclusion through different reasoning, and the discovery was eventually accepted. George Gamow, Ralph Alpher, and Robert Herman had calculated that there should be evidence for a Big Bang in the background temperature of the universe. In 1964, Arno Pensius and Robert Wilson discovered a 3 Kelvin background hiss in their Bell Labs radio telescope, the Homdel Horn antenna which was evidence for this hypothesis, and formed the basis for several results that helped determine the age of the universe. Supernova SN 1987A was observed by astronomers on Earth both visually, and in a triumph for neutrino astronomy, by the solar neutrino detectors at Kamiokandi. But the solar neutrino flux was a fraction of its theoretically expected value. This discrepancy forced a change in some values in the standard model for particle physics, biology and medicine. William 
William Harvey published De Motu Cordis in 1628, which revealed his conclusions, based on his extensive studies of vertebrate circulatory systems. He identified the central role of the heart, arteries, and veins in producing blood movement in a circuit, and failed to find any confirmation of Galen's pre-existing notions of heating and cooling functions. The history of early modern biology and medicine is often told through the search for the seat of the soul. Galen in his descriptions of his foundational work in medicine presents the distinctions between arteries, veins, and nerves using the vocabulary of the soul. In 1847, Hungarian physician Ignac Fulop Semmelweis dramatically reduced the occurrence of puerperal fever by simply requiring physicians to wash their hands before attending to women in childbirth. This discovery predated the germ theory of disease. However, Semmelweis findings were not appreciated by his contemporaries and handwashing came into use only with discoveries by British surgeon Joseph Lister, who in 1865 proved the principles of antisepsis. Lister's work was based on the important findings by French biologist Louis Pasteur. Pasteur was able to link microorganisms with a disease, revolutionizing medicine. He also devised one of the most important methods in preventive medicine, when in 1880 he produced a vaccine against rabies. Pasteur invented the process of pasteurization to help prevent the spread of disease through milk and other foods. Foods. Perhaps the most prominent, controversial, and far-reaching theory in all of science has been the theory of evolution by natural selection put The Age of Enlightenment was a European affair. The 17th century brought decisive Lister's work was based on the important findings by French biologist Louis Pasteur. Pasteur was able to link microorganisms with a disease, revolutionizing medicine. He also devised one of the most important methods in preventive medicine, when in 1880 he produced a vaccine against rabies. Pasteur invented the process of pasteurization to help prevent the spread of disease through milk and other foods. Foods. Perhaps the most prominent, controversial, and far-reaching theory in all of science has been the theory of evolution by natural selection put forward by the English naturalist Charles Darwin in his book on the origin of species in 1859. He proposed that the features of all living things, including humans, were shaped by natural processes over long periods. The theory of evolution in its current form affects almost all areas of biology. Implications of evolution on fields outside of pure science have led to both opposition and support from different parts of society and profoundly influenced the popular understanding of man's place in the universe. In the early 20th century, the study of heredity became a major investigation after the rediscovery in 1900 of the laws of inheritance developed by the Moravian monk Gregor Mendel in 1866. Mendel's laws provided the beginnings of the study of genetics, which became a major field of research for both scientific and industrial research. By 1953, James D. Watson, Francis Crick, and Maurice Wilkins clarified the basic structure of DNA, the genetic material for expressing life in all its forms. In the late 20th century, the possibilities of genetic engineering became practical for the first time, and a massive international effort began in 1990 to map out an entire human genome, the Human Genome Project. The discipline of ecology typically traces its origin to the synthesis of Darwinian evolution and Humboldtian biogeography in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Equally important in the rise of ecology, however, were microbiology and soil science, particularly the cycle of life concept, prominent in the work Louis Pasteur and Ferdinand Cohn. The word ecology was coined by Ernst Haeckel, whose particularly holistic 
view of nature in general, and Darwin's theory in particular, was important in the spread of ecological thinking. In the 1930s, Arthur Tansley and others began developing the field of ecosystem ecology, which combined experimental soil science with physiological concepts of energy and the techniques of field biology. Neuroscience is a multidisciplinary branch of science that combines physiology, neuroanatomy, molecular biology, developmental biology, cytology, mathematical modeling, and psychology to understand the fundamental and emergent properties of neurons, glia, nervous systems, and neural circuits.